The most important thing that I want to try to impress on you is that plain text is awesome. And here's why. Hello everyone, I just bashed the microphone, but we're going to leave it in. So, hello everyone, uh, I wanted to talk to you about why plain text is awesome. Not just that it is awesome, but why it's awesome. Um, to give you a bit of background, I am a podcaster and a developer and a podcast editor and a whole bunch of stuff. Um, check the links in the description below for what I'm uh, doing and what I do and how that all fits together. You'll have to bear with me because I'm on a yoga ball. The reason I'm on a yoga ball is because I went a little bit too uh, over the top yesterday when I was working out and I've caused myself a bit of an injury so um, forcing myself to sit up straight will stop me from slouching which will stop me from causing more injury to my lower back but anyway like I said you'll have to bear with me because I'm a little bit bouncy anyway do you like the hat right um, so what I wanted to talk to you about is uh, plain text and why it's awesome to give you some background, like I said earlier, I'm a podcaster, I create a bunch of shows, and when I uh, arrange to have guests on, I literally send them this repo. And this is a, I'm pointing there, it's actually, yeah, it's like one of these two sides. <laughs> um, the This GitHub repo is something that I send out to people when they agree to be on the show, because it's important that they know what to expect. Right, um, so it's a bunch of uh, frequently asked questions and a doc in a document that I send around that helps people to figure out what's going on. So to show you what that is, let me open it in this window here. There's you know t uh, table of contents and stuff, and it talks about like what do I do to get the best kind of recording, or how do I do this, or how long will it last, that kind of thing, right? But we don't have to worry about that just yet. But what I'm trying to say is I send, I keep that as a plain text file because plain text is so easy to manipulate and it always has been and it always will be. It will always be more easy to manipulate, easier to manipulate rather, than um, binary file formats. What do I mean by binary file, file, file formats? File formats. Okay, so this PDF is a binary file format. I can't open it in anything other than um, a PDF reader, otherwise it'll just come out as garbled text, right? Another example is if I, if you look over here, I've created a docx version, a Word document version of it. Now I've got to wait for LibreOffice to fire up before I can actually show you it. It has fired up, fantastic. But uh, why I use LibreOffice is my own personal decision, whatever, right? But you can see here that it highlights certain things, it does certain things a different way, it puts them on uh, one page, it embeds images this way, and I've actually gone and created an ODT version of it. I'll show you how I've done these later on, and it comes out again, slightly different, right? But w w let's say I want to edit this file, right? Let's say I want to remove the word podcast, right? Here we go, I'll show you a real example, podcast, right? Look, one, two, three, four, five, loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of instances of the word podcast. Right, I can do control H, let me bring up the magnifier, and I can search for podcast and say replace that with J. Replace all. Fantastic, right? Whoops. And what's great about that is that's gone and replaced all of those instances of the word podcast. Look, I've got a, a typo here, specific. Specific, there you go. If I search for a podcast, nothing. If I search for J, there it is. Please see the J planning files. Bring that magnifier. There we go. Please see the J planning files. Fantastic. Problem is, whoops, that I have to remember to save that and close it. And then I've got to remember to send the new version to whoever needs the new version, which is not a huge problem. But if I've got stacks and stacks of these binary files, I've got to do it on every single one. Okay. But what about if I want to do that with my plain text files? Well, let's have a look. I've got the files over here. Pull up the magnifier, because then you can see what I'm doing, right? I can, let's say I want to read that uh, guest fact. So let's have a guest, whoops. Guest FAQ, whoops. 
What's wrong with it? Guest faq.md, right? That's the file there. Let's say I want to read it inside of my command prompt. I totally can. I don't need to do anything because it is plain text. What if, right? Let's do an ls again, right? What if I do cat guest faq.pdf? You see what I mean? It's all garbled text and it means nothing. Let's just quit out of that. Oh God, it's taking over my machine. It's just, right? Useless, absolutely useless. You can't do anything with that. You can see there's some XML there. If I do the same thing with the uh, docx, again, loads of garbled text, right? I'll show you why it's garbled text. I'll let that do its thing, right? But over here with the docx file, if I open the archive, it's actually a zip file. Pro tip. Ta-da! That's my docx file, right? If I go to Word Media, there's the image that I embed into the into the cop into the actual document itself. If I open this document.xml, you can see first paragraph. We would like to thank you for agreeing to be on the show, right? If we go back over here, first paragraph. We would like to thank you for being agreeing to be on the show. It's all the reason it's zipped is because XML is huge. It's really descriptive, but it's huge, right? So okay, right? I've decided I don't want to just print everything on the screen. Let's bring the magnifier up again, right? What if let's do an LS, right? What if I want to see where the word podcast is used in my markdown file? Now grep is the tool you want. Grep is great for this. If I do podcast and then do guest fac md, what this is going to do, grep, uh, I believe stands for global uh, reg regular expression parser, right? Yeah. So if I do grep podcast guest fac, it actually shows me. Now because I'm in Windows and I'm using Commander, it doesn't highlight anything, but it shows me the two lines that have the word podcast in it. There's podcast there, and there's podcast there. What if I want to change that, right? Now let's say, now, if I do, where are we? Let's say I decide I don't want to be, I don't want it to be known as a podcast, right? I want to be known it. I want my shows not to be known as podcasts, but as J-grams, right? Okay, so what I do is I say, podcast, J-gram, G, and then I say all files in this folder. I'll talk about what these commands do in a minute. Uh, guest fact.md output to new guest whoops guest faq.md right okay so what we're saying here is we're saying use said which is an app just like grep is pass in this regular expression we're searching for a podcast and we're going to replace it with jgram and we're going to, we're going to look globally then we're saying load all the files in this directory and all subdirectories um, f starting with this file and outputting to that file, right? And I've broken it. I broke it again. What I do? I'm always breaking. I'm always breaking. Said. Oh no, that's what I did. I don't need to do that. There we go. So what you can see is I've actually run that command now. So if I do cat new guest fac, uh, no, we don't want to do cat because that prints it off to the screen. Grep. We want to look for the word podcast in new guest fact. Doesn't come up. But if I search for Jgram, ta da! So look at that. One of our Jgrams planning Jgram panel flank files. Now, what I, what I love about this, firstly, let's change podcasts to Jgrams, right? Because I make that many of them anyway. So let's just do it. Let's go buy Jgram.io or something. I don't know. Anyway. That's beside the point. The reason I do this is because plain text is so much easier to read, write, and manipulate than um, the binary data is. Let me just close this. And the reason that I feel that is because, I mean, I could do it in the command line if I want, or I can open up something like Visual Studio Code, close these files and open this, and you can see a whole bunch of files that are in there. You can see that I've created that new guest fact, but uh, you can also see that I've edited this one, right? What's great about this? Source control is built in. Source control works really well with um, with plain text, right? So if I go to my uh, source control button and I go to guestfact.md, you can literally see. Uh, yeah, let's, no, we don't need the magnifier. You can literally see, right? I change the word document, the files. If I scroll across, you can see document for files. You know, because I did that control F, right? You 
you see there, document for files. What if I go into my commander again, and I do magnifier, come down here, and I say, right, we don't want to pipe it out to new guest fact, we want to pipe it out to guest fact, MD. Overwrite the file, right? Come out of magnifier. Now what's happened is, it thinks it's a new file, which is a bit of a shame. But you can see, I can see that there are changes here, right? Because it's wonderful. Hey everyone, so I realized something whilst I was editing that video, I kind of messed up that previous command. Um, I'm not gonna show you the better command to do because I just don't wanna, I wanna show you how to do it visually. Uh, you could totally move the file if you wanted, but let's take a look at the actual files. So here's our empty guest FAQ and here's the guest FAQ where we've swapped for jgrams, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say copy that and I'm going to say paste that in there. So let's say that we ran the command correctly, right? Because the point was not to show you the actual command, the point was to actually show you the um, the, the source control ability, right? Because this is all in source control, right? So if I go to guestfac.md, I'm going to expand this out. Podcasts has been swapped to jgrams. So you can see that right there and there. And that's really useful, I think, anyway. Really useful for um, for the point that I was trying to make. But anyway, let's get back to the actual video, right? It helps with the source control stuff. It's brilliant, right? And keeping things in source control can really help. If you're writing a 5,000 word document and then you realize, whoops, I messed up on every single page, not so easy to go back and change. If you realize, whoops, I messed up right at the beginning, not so easy to change. But then you say to me, Jay, I, I like this. But I, I want a binary file format. Well, that's totally fine too. Let me just delete these two binary file formats, go back into the magnifier, right? And I say, I'm gonna run through these commands that I've done already. Perhaps I should have looked for it first. There we go, right? So I can use an app called Pandoc. I'll show you the Wikipedia page and I'll link to it in the description below. But you can use Pandoc and you can say, put in the guest fact, put in the show specifics, a list of files here. So this whole section here is a list of files, right? And then output to this docx file. Voila, there it is. If I look across, dot docx, there it is. Right? It's gonna be empty because I wiped out the content of the file. Ta -da! There you go. So it doesn't have the, the first bit of the files, but that's not a huge problem, is it? Really? Right? So what's great about that, you can just push a button, you can type a couple of commands and change the content. The next the next step, right? I mentioned earlier on that I use this as a onboarding tool. I'll send this to the guests who are on the show. And this is completely open source, right? I've actually got a license here that says it's MIT. You can do what you want with it. You can take this, copy it, remix it, do whatever you want. You don't even have to um, say that you've got it from me or anything like that, right? Look, bring the magnifier up. Look at what you can do with it. Commercial use, modification, distribution, private use, no liability or warranty, right? So go ahead, do it if you want. I'll put the link in the description. But what's even better about this, right? Somebody says to me, I don't want a bunch of text files, I want a PDF. Well, guess what? If I go to the GitHub folder, into the workflows folder, into the main.yaml, right? Check it out. I've got an action that fires every time someone pushes to the master branch or submits a pull request, and it goes and builds the PDF for me. I don't have to do anything. I don't, I don't have to do anything, which means that if someone, so this has already had a number of forks. There's only one at the moment, but this has already had a number of forks. If somebody wants to fork this, change a bunch of the text and submit a pull request, and I accept it, it will go straight out. Right? So I pointed out that there was a, a spelling mistake in specifics. Somebody wants to fix that, they can. Raise a pull request and it will come straight in. Right? It's great. Plain text, the web runs on plain text. Let's have a look at this Wikipedia page for, for grep, right? I'm gonna control you. Oh look, the content of the page, the original source, is plain text. Everything's plain text and you should stay with plain text. This plain text is awesome. And if I can only get one point through to you right now, and that is that I think plain text is awesome and that everyone who uses binary file format should maybe reconsider it if they're just working with text. I've actually received in the past photographs of text that people wanted me to put onto their website, which is beyond useless. But that's my, that's me, right? That's just my opinion. Anyway, you all stay awesome. And I will catch you again another time. Let me know in the comments whether you think plain text is good enough. Let me know if you've used Greg, uh, Grep 
So we talked about Grep, we talked about Sed, I didn't touch on Orc, we talked about Pandoc, I didn't touch on Vim or VI or Emacs. Um, we didn't really talk about Markdown, but we can in another video. Let me know in the description below and tell me what you think. Anyway, this is me signing out saying, see you later, folks. Have a wonderful day, and I will catch you again. Bye.